forgot. Right then, let's talk to Morris Cousins. Morris is the campaign director of Net Zero Watch. Morris, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Peter. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Probably a bit better than Ed Miliband. Um, the uh, economist Powell uh, Sizak told the BBC, Anal analysis needs to be updated to take into account changes of the cost of offshore wind and other factors. I, for one, I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you, that Ed Miliband's promise to cut energy bills by £300 could end up as a lot of hot air. What do you think, Morris? Well, I mean, it's been a dreadful 24 hours for, for Ed Miliband. I think there's been three stories today in the, in the, in the space of 24 hours that have, that have really been a body blow to his election campaign that, uh, slogan that he would save us £300 off our energy bills. It, it was always yeah. nonsense, wasn't it, Morris? It was always just absolute it was always, nonsense. It was always nonsense. It was divorced from physical reality. That's really what it comes down to. All energy systems are governed by the laws of thermodynamics. And everything that Ed Miliband and, and the Labour Party have been proposing for, for decades now defies those laws. You know, we, we've been we, what we have done really since since 2005, when 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 electricity production in this country sort of peaked, is we have engaged in a deliberate policy to de-densify the production base of our electricity system. In, in 2005, 95% of our electricity generating um, sources were from firm sources: coal, gas, nuclear, even a bit of oil and a tiny bit of tiny bit of hydro. And today. It's about less, less than half of that comes from firm sources. And what we've been doing is we've been producing electricity from intermittent, low-density sources like wind and solar. And as a result, the end of all of that, we have the highest industrial electricity prices in the developed world. That is the record of both Labour and the Conservatives. Yeah, listen, I think a lot of people will agree with exactly what you're saying there. And people from talking about people divorced from physical reality, Tony Blair has urged Ed Miliband to abandon his clean power targets. Could a stop clock be telling the right time twice a day? <laughs> Look, I, I, I've read the, the Tony Blair report. It's, 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 it's not a bad report. I don't agree with everything in it, but, uh, you know, it is yet again another body blow to, to, Ed, to Ed Miliband. Um, I think that, you know, T Tony, Blair, Tony Blair, the Tony Blair Institute is right in what they're, in what they're saying. We should, we should uh, ditch the clean power agenda. I know they've sort of couched it in classic Westminster lingo about recalibrating and reframing it, but really they're saying it needs to, it needs to be ditched. Um, and what, what we need to be able to do is also to stop this AR7 and AR8 auctions, which Miliband wants to push through. What, what, what are those? Just tell us through that. I, I, I'm not familiar with those. I don't think a lot of our viewers and listeners will be either. What, what does that mean? So the, the, the AR7, uh, it's allocation round seven, it's, it's to bring on a load, load of, a load of um, uh, renewable energy on, on, uh, into the system to help him to meet his uh, Clean Power 2030 target. And it, these are these are critical, really, really for that. And what these will end up doing is is pushing up pushing up bills. And the the, the reason why they will push up bills is because they will increase the fixed costs of the system. So um, what we will end up having is more of this intermittent low density energy generation source on our on our grid. And it'll it'll mean it's it's important to remember this. It's not just the subsidies that are that, that will push up that push up your bills. It is also these things what they call systems costs, which are which are essential for the operating of of the grid. And those things will never go away with the amount of with with these renewables when you when you bring them on when you bring them on. They will be a permanent feature of of our electricity of our electricity bills. And the, and the Tony Blair Institute, you know, they're sounding the alarm on a lot of this. Although I'm a bit confused because they do seem to think that we can we can still have 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 lower bills with 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 renewables on the on the on the grid um, uh, or making up or making up the, mo the most part of it is what, um, it's a bit confusing well I know what you mean but certainly there's there's so much clarity that has come certainly when Tony Blair is saying that the pledge to decarbonize UK electricity by 2030 destroying industry damaging households and that the 300 pound uh, reduction just isn't going to happen I mean there are so many people not unlike yourself Morris who were saying this for years. Why is it taking so long for the establishment to catch up? I think it's unavoidable now. We've because because of the cost of living crisis. I think it's reached such a point where it's dragging more and more people in in in, in certain income brackets who perhaps might not have noticed these sorts of things before. But you know, you are now getting middle class families that are being dragged into this into this into this problem. And you know, uh, it's it, we, we've got reform ahead in the polls. That is that is obviously putting pressure on on both Labour and the Tories. The Conservatives have broken ranks on the. 
on the climate change uh, agenda. And Labour now has to sort of really examine whether or not any of this really adds up. They don't have you know, they don't have the support anymore of the Conservatives as to what they're as to what they're doing. So I think it's a combination really of the politics catching up with the with the with the physics and the economics. Yeah. Um, listen, thank you as always, Morris. That's Morris Cousins there, campaign director of Net Zero Watch Shannon Carl.